What's up guys? Micah back here again and uh, we're gonna go make some hay. So we're off like a herd of turtles here, uh, clocking in at about 19 mile an hour. Um, these older magnums weren't ever really known for their speed, but uh, they're super reliable. This one is put to a Vermeer roll bar rake. Um, like I said earlier, we're gonna try and get some hay in today. I don't know exactly how much, how many acres we have laying. I, I think it's 30 or a little more. Uh, I was away this weekend on a senior trip with some friends. We just graduated last week and decided to go to the mountains. We all have dual sport motorcycles. And so we uh, went away for the weekend. Um, and when I came home, I was told get ready because we have a one day window to get some, get all the hay in. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Not sure exactly when, but we're gonna try and get the hay picked up and get it under the roof before the rain comes, whenever that is. All right, so this is always the fun part. We're ready to unfold. There's a little contraption here with all the different functions. It runs off of one of the hydraulic remotes, but it's always fun to try and figure out and remember what does what. it enough to have it down to a science but usually you figure it out pretty quick with a little bit of it comes back to memory pretty quick but uh, I think we got it about where we want it we'll see Looks like we're in business. So I just got off the phone with my dad. Uh, he's running our other rake. There, we have three rakes running today. Um, we have this rake going and two single rakes. One of them is a roller bar rake, kind of like this. Um, it is just a single rotary rake though, or single roller bar rake. Um, so it's only one of those sides. So he would have to make two passes to get one swath. He would have to go out and then turn around and come back. Um, and then we also have a single rotary rake, and that is also going. Um, so we have quite got quite a bit of stuff going on this afternoon, burning a lot of diesel fuel. Um, but hopefully uh, it all comes together here and we get the hay up. Uh, Dad's, Dad and my brother, they're running the other two rakes. And when Dad's done with the one field, my grandpa is going to take over for him. So dad can go start our one baler and then when I'm done with these fields uh, we're going to go and I'm going to start running our other baler which is actually hooked to the 380 right now. Um, but the baler my dad's going to start running is our 3x3 three three baler. So that's what we usually try and make most of our good hay with. Um, our good hay, most of our customers are horse owners. Um, and they like the size of the 3x3 three three bale because it's easy for them to handle. And then uh, the 3x4 three baler, we usually run in hay that isn't as good and in hay that we like to send to mushroom houses and for mulch hay. But the hay that I'm gonna bale this afternoon with our 3x4 three baler is actually going to a, another local dairy. Um, we're gonna feed it for the cattle. So, got a lot going on. This stuff is actually very, very thick. Um, surprised it's dry in the amount of time that we had it laying. Um, but it, it's very thick. It's gonna make a lot of bales, so that ought to be interesting.
seems to be pretty dry here. Um, swaths are so big, they're actually not even really staying together like they should. And then the wind's kind of blowing them apart again. So, but seems to be good and dry. Called Dad, and uh, he's gonna come with the baler. So we'll see if we can stay ahead of him. Well, we're wrapping the field up here, taking the last pass. I got it opened up as, almost as wide as it goes. I think it goes maybe another couple feet here, but trying to stretch what's left here. Um, I had to leave a little bit of a pass, so I had some end rows to turn around on. And it's always hard to gauge how much you need. And you think you leave what you take and you always leave a little bit more. So trying to you know, stretch it and make it work. But looks like it's just taken. So hopefully it doesn't get any wider than that. Um, but yeah, this field is done. My dad should be here soon at the baler. Uh, there's another field to rake on this farm, a little bit smaller than the field I just did, but we'll go rake that, see what that looks like, make sure it's fit, and then by that time, uh, by that point in time, my brother should have the rest of everything raked, and we'll go jump in the baler and see how much hay we can put in the box. Yeah, so this isn't exactly our nicest field to get into. Um, it's kind of a hole in the wall place. And there's not a ton of stuff that you can get up in here. Um, it uh, really makes you check stuff out before you bring equipment up in here. We have some stuff that won't fit up through here. Um, this is actually the first time this tractor and rake has come up into here, and it was very tight uh, making the corner at the bottom, but we made it and uh, finally see some daylight at the end of the tunnel here. So, fields up here. Um, we have these down at the bottom of the hill here, back through the woods is the other field that I just raked. Um, these two fields have pretty much always been in hay, um, mainly because of the area they're in and the deer pressure that we have here. Um, this is this is a very highly populated area um, with deer, and so it makes a lot of crops almost impossible to grow here. We plant most of this in hay. Uh, rarely, rarely does the other part of this farm get put in corn. Usually uh, we plant some tobacco down there and we plant some rye, not to chop, but we combine it and then we use this cover crop uh, in the fall after we're done combining. So we try and think about what we're planting here just because of how bad the deer situation is. It makes it very difficult to um, get stuff grown and the other part to it is there's some neighbors that are kind of finicky when it comes to hunting which is okay but they're also not the ones trying to grow the crops um, the deer aren't going into their bank and eating their money so kind of makes it a problem but we do what we can um, it's not unfarmable it just isn't how some of our other ground is. up cleaning the end rows up from where I had to turn around so we'll uh, get this cleaned up my dad just got here to this farm um, to the last field we raked and he's gonna start bailing 
this. This was good hay. It's actually a really nice color. Probably some of the best stuff we buried this shot of first cutting hay. Um, but it is not quite as thick as some of the other stuff. But it's looking like really nice horse hay. So we'll see what it looks like once it's in a bale and once we test some of it. But from the looks of it while raking, Looking pretty nice. All right, well that's a wrap. We gotta put this safety bracket on to make sure it doesn't bounce apart when you're going down the road. Well, looks like I got it done just in time. So, this is all the twine uh, to hold the bale together, so Right now, uh, for this knotter, it's taking out of this ball of twine, and then I have the end of the partial one tied into a new one. And that's how it is for all of these. Just, you double check and make sure they're all good before you get started, or else it causes more problems than it's worth. It's a lot easier to just check, and make sure everything looks good. So the hay comes in in through the pickup into here where it this is the stuffer so it collects in here and then pushes up into here and then up in there's the chamber where it keeps packing the bales together and then the knotters up top tie it and eventually comes out the chute and this little thing it's a little trigger it tells me when the bale dropped so I know, got the count, everything looks good. So I guess we'll give it a whirl. I have the moisture, uh, moisture probe along. We'll see, see what it is out there. But from what dad's saying, the field that he's bailing is fit. So we're gonna hope that the field I'm going to is also fit. But I guess we'll see that when we get there. The grass fields, uh, hay fields we're going to now, um, they're actually owned by the conservation district um, and the only thing that we can really farm on them is hay. So it's kind of back in, back in the middle of nowhere but um, they're nice hay fields and they work well for us uh, for making hay. Um, just this year they decided they were going to plant some trees in them and it's kind of annoying at the placement that they decided on for the trees, but um, that's where they decided to plant them. And so now we have some little tree tubes in the middle of what were once nice big hay fields, but um, we, we do still get to work with a little bit of the hay fields. We cut this one last week before the rain came through. Um, so this is in the process of regrowing for second cutting, but there's another field across the road there. Um, in total, there's about 50 acres of hay back here, or there was before they planted trees. Um, I don't really know what was left after they got done planting trees, um, but before they planted trees, there was about 50 acres. So we. Sometimes we'd try and mow it all at once if we had a big enough window, but 50 acres of hay is a pretty good chunk of hay to mow down and try and get all at one shot. So we're just getting started here. Um, this monitor kind of tells me everything I need to know. So that double beep, that was a tie. So one of the bales in the chamber um, just got tied. So two beeps means tie. One long beep means the bale just dropped off the chute. Um, up here is the load, which that's how much pressure um, the baler is running, how much it's taking to squeeze the bale, and uh, that can that can be a good indicator of if it's dry or uh, if it's too wet. And then up here, uh, the arrows kind of tell you where to drive on the swath. Um, as to how it'll fill out the bale the nicest. You don't want to run all on one side of the swath. 
uh, or the bail will come out kind of crooked, one side will pack tighter. Um, and then up top, uh, it's got numbers, so two, um, right now, yeah, the ideal spot is to have it at one. Um, so one means that for every uh, stuffer stroke, the plunger is hitting. So for every, the stuffer is what kind of holds the hay once it come in, comes in through the pickup, and then it'll shoot, push that up into the, uh, into the plunger, which pushes it into the rectangular chamber which makes the bale. So if you have a one-to-one -one ratio, that's one stuffer plunge for every um, plunger stroke. So that's ideally where you want to be. And then down here you have your RPMs um, and then just some other stuff, the flakes in a bale. Um, for any of you that have worked with bales or if you watch when Ashland's bedding up punches, you can see it kind of comes off the bale kind of breaks apart into slabs. Uh, we call those flakes or laps. Um, and that is how many laps are in a bale. So it tries to give you a pretty good feel for when you're gonna drop a bale or how much you're putting into a bale. Um, for the operator in the cab, it's pretty helpful. So already so far, we've dropped two bales coming out through here. So these swads don't look quite as big, but it's looking like it's going to make a decent amount of stuff. do something we usually try and avoid doing but I had a bale fall right on top of a swath so we'll try and push it out of the way and then get back around and see if we can get it now it's kind of something you can't control but every now and again it happens and kind of got to do what you got to do to get it. So the neighbors that we have, the neighboring dairy that's coming to get these bales, um, they're hauling them in the back of a dump truck. Uh, we actually haul some in the back of our dump trucks as well. Uh, we just make them the right length and then they slide uh, straight back in the back and then you just got to dump them out then. But I measured a couple bales when I first started and they turned out a little bit too long so I had to tie a bale off and then put it in the baler that we wanted it shorter well when you do that you get stupid little things like that because it can't make up its mind whether it wants to be the bale that you had the length set at or make it uh, turn into the new length so we're gonna have to either cut that bale apart and then push it around some and rebale it or we'll just take that back to our steers that we have, break it open there. I would say we're about halfway done with this first field here. We got one more field on the other side of the road. Um, making nice hay. The swans are pretty big, but the three by four baler eats through it pretty well. Um, I would say uh, we're doing about almost seven mile an hour. Um, so, to me that seems pretty good, um, everything is still looking pretty good, 
and the monitor, it, it thinks it knows how many bales an hour we can get. Um, I'm not totally sold on if it actually works, uh, just because everything changes with, you know, how big the swaths are or what type of field you're in, where you're at, I mean, everything can change that. Um, but with what it says now, uh, we are getting 33 bales to the hour. Um, which it's not the best that I've seen come up on the monitor, but it's it's consistent. Say hi. Hi. So boss showed up. Um, he uh, pretty much runs the show when he's with me. Um, what's your name? What's your name? No. He's being shy. Um, his name is Jackson. Uh, he's my brother. We adopted him last year in August. Um, so he's usually riding with me. Uh, makes a good buddy to uh, kind of pass the time when you're out here in the fields for a while. So him and I are going to go pick up some bales and uh, I guess we'll catch you guys in the next one. Can you say bye? Bye.